My name is Lou D'Andrea, and today I'm going to be giving a talk on uh, Dynamic Module. Dynamic Module is a technology that we built um, alongside Manipulate back in the day. Um, and we've never focused on it in one of these talks, so I thought it was time that we um, address some concerns and uh, point out just how wonderful this thing is. This will, be a, this will not be a high-level, hand-waving, look at all the pretty pictures kind of talk. This is a low-level, you know, get your hands dirty because, you know, you want to build something kind of talk. So feel f there, there are lots of other talks going on today, um, so um, this is one of them. Um, so why did we decide to build dynamic module in the first place? Well, we had module, we have block, we have width, we have other scoping constructs. Module is the one closest to what we wanted to use for interfaces, and it's great. Module is wonderful. Module gives you nice lexical scoping where you have local variables that can be referred to only within the scope of that module. Um, and it does this, this naming change, so you have local module variables, they get renamed before it's evaluated to ensure that those scoping don't escape the, the module. So here is just a simple module example that shows the evidence of that scoping. Um, so the internal, the fully localized module variable name for this guy is, is actually stored in the kernel as var dollar number. So this is good to, for scoping. Um, it also has this temporary attribute for these local symbols so that it creates a bunch of symbols and then at, when the module is done, it gets rid of them. So you don't have to worry about memory bloat, you don't have to worry about symbols taking up space after, after you're done with them. So here's another simple example that demonstrates that. We have a module that uses a local variable x um, and after it's done, there is no x dollar 1584 hanging around. That variable has been cleared um, and removed. So module is wonderful in, as far as it goes. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't quite ideal for building interfaces. What are the things that we needed that module didn't do in order to build interfaces? Um, again, this is in the, in the world where manipulate was just a twinkle in somebody's eye. Um, so module local variable renumbering, so this x dollar 37, using an incremental numbering system like this uh, ensures that you have a unique symbol in that kernel session, but it doesn't say anything about that variable existing in future kernel sessions or indeed future front end sessions. Um, so again, this, this just adding, literally adding dollar number to something is no guarantee that it's gonna be unique from session to session because in the next session, numbering starts over. Um, also, this notion of, of symbols being temporary is no good for interfaces that need to save their state. We want interfaces to be able to you know, remember that a user has checked this checkbox or remember that they've left a slider in a particular position. Remember it not only for the duration of your kernel session, but be able to serialize that into a notebook and the next time it's opened to get that information back. So we need persistence, um, which module doesn't provide. And then we also needed a new kind of scoping where module scopes during the course of a kernel evaluation, right? You enter the module, you evaluate inside the module, you exit the module. When you're done, the module is gone. Um, we needed something that was able to scope um, all the way into a front end cell. So here we have an example of this. Note the redness of the X's. I'll be discussing those in some detail later. Um, so we have an interface that seems to work, but this is not using module renamed variables. And so if we made a copy of this interface, it's going to refer to the same module variable. So now we have two interfaces that, you know, if we had two manipulates that referred to the same variable, we wouldn't want one manipulate moving around while we're sliding the other one. So this type of scoping for module um, was not quite ideal for us. So we built something that was. Um, we built dynamic module. Dynamic module has a couple of key utilities that uh, module does not. One important aspect is that it doesn't disappear when it's done. So module, we have you know, the output of a module, the fact that this came through module is gone. There's no module wrapper around the output. Um, if you look at the same content, but processed through dynamic module, it gives the same result, but that result is still wrapped in you know, it remembers that it came from a dynamic module. It remembers the state of local variables when it was evaluated. So we have a scoping construct that's persistent. 
Um, we have a scoping construct that stores the definitions of its local variables, not just own values, as module provides. Um, but here we have a local variable that has a down value. And what does this look like? Um, I use input form throughout, by the way, to prevent the dynamic module from typesetting, because once it typesets, then it does other wonderful things that I'll talk about in detail. But I wanted to look specifically at the evaluation <laughs> semantics uh, just now. So we look at the input form of the result of this evaluation, and we see that not only are the own values remembered, but also the, the down values of local symbols are also automatically remembered. Clearly important and useful. Um, as I just hinted at, dynamic module typesets as another scoping construct, a dynamic module box that scopes in space in the front end. So here, if we have, um, let's see, if we have, if we evaluate this thing, we have a dynamic module box. I'll unformat this to show you the dynamic module box with local state, et cetera. Um, and the benefit of this is if we make a copy of this box, merely by making a copy, we have created a new scoping construct on the screen. So these two, these two local x's are not the same local x. Just by making a copy of it, I've produced a new localization construct without typing a line of code. Um, so, and this is exactly what one wants for, for instance, manipulates. Um, you, want to, you want maybe to have several copies of, of a manipulate and visit different points in the parameter space um, in different manipulates and you want them to scope like this. Um, another nice feature that we built into dynamic module, which I'll talk about at some length, is um, the ability to have code that runs automatically when that dynamic module box first appears. Um, clearly useful for interfaces to run warm-up code uh, to get things into a state where the interface is ready for the user to interact with it. Um, okay. So now I'm gonna walk you through the full arc of what happens when you evaluate a dynamic module, what happens when it goes through typesetting, and what happens um, when it goes through rendering. You know, at what point do certain things evaluate? Um, by the way, you see at the bottom of this slide, there's a bonus section. Uh, throughout this talk, there will be bonus sections. I will not be opening those. Those are in the notebook for you to look at at your leisure. The notebook is on the conference website. Please download it work through it. I think there's some interesting things um, that you can find there. And if you need help finding the conference website, ask your neighbor. Um, so dynamic module starts with evaluation. Dynamic module has the hold all attribute, but like many functions that have the hold all attribute, that doesn't mean that it just doesn't do any evaluation. It means it does carefully controlled evaluation. Um, and in the case of dynamic module, that carefully controlled evaluation is taking the variable initializers and the payload, you know, the interesting bits, the body, the second argument of the dynamic module, and evaluating those things within the context of a module. So it does full localization, evaluates them to produce you know, new initializers, potentially with new values. It has the result of evaluating whatever was in the, the body, and other you know, down values and such are stored here. So this is what happens during the main loop evaluation of dynamic module. It evaluates as if it were a module, but then it returns something that still remembers that it was a dynamic module. So here we have an example where we have an initializer, we have a body that changes the value of a local variable and then returns the value of the local variable. As a result of evaluation, this gives, well, the local variable has a new value by virtue of having evaluated this, and the result of evaluating this is an integer, okay. Not very interesting, but, but, but we're, we're on a journey here, yeah. One thing I'll point out is that initialization, if there were an, if there were an initialization setting here, um, it would not be run as a result of the kernel main loop evaluation. And I will prove that to you by evaluating this example. So here we have an initialization which, if it were run, would have set x to some other variable, and we see that it has not been run. But it has been remembered to be run at a future date. So initialization, not run that early. What happens during typesetting? So after evaluation, we typeset the result, we typeset the dynamic module into a dynamic module box and pass it off to the front end. And 
the important thing that happens here, two important things that happen here. One is that the, um, the, vari the local variables are renamed in such a way that the front end can detect them and manage their scoping going forward because in the box we still have a scoping construct. Um, and so if we look at the result of, here, here's pure evaluation, here is the result of typesetting, and we see the main difference, the only difference, no, two differences. One is the, uh, the variable has been renamed with something that lets the front end find it later. Um, and the content obviously has been typeset. The typeset form of an integer is a string. The other interesting thing, I said there were two things that happened during typesetting, the other interesting thing is that save definitions is activated. So save definitions true, those of you who have contributed to the demonstrations project are familiar with it. Um, it's a convenient way to fill up the initialization option of a dynamic module or a manipulate. Um, that filling, that action happens during typesetting. So here we have a dynamic module that sets save definition to true and we rely on this external function h. Uh, during evaluation, we see there's no initialization here, it's still save definitions, but as a result of typesetting, we see now that that's where the initialization, so save definitions true has now become an initialization setting. That, that transformation happens during typesetting. And I'll point out again, initialization sounds like the very first thing that would, be, that would be evaluated does not get evaluated during typesetting. Nothing is allowed to evaluate during typesetting as a general principle. If you went to Jason Harris's talk yesterday, you know this. Um, so when is initialization evaluated? Well, finally we get to rendering. The dynamic module box is sent to the front end. The first thing the front end does, other than trying to show things, is um, look for initialization options. So in this case, we have an initialization that sets a local variable to the process number of the kernel, and we have a dynamic that displays that ID, and we evaluate it and we see, okay, that's a number. Um, so, so the initialization is only run, so similar to dynamics, dynamic only formats, only evaluates when it's formatted. Um, seeing a dynamic on screen is the only time when its contents are able to format. Likewise, seeing a dynamic module on screen is the only time when the initialization is allowed to format. It formats as a result of rendering and formatting for the user. Um, if there's no one there to see it, it won't evaluate. Uh, and again, bonus sections I won't be opening during this talk. Please go get the notebook and, uh, and have fun. Okay. Um, so one interesting thing about initialization is that it is guaranteed to evaluate before any synchronous dynamics in your dynamic module. Um, this is why it's named initialization, because it's guaranteed to come first. If, if your initialization is happening synchronously, which it does by default, and your dynamics are happening synchronously, which they do by default, um, then we can guarantee that the function that you define in your initialization will be present when the dynamic needs that definition. So, um, and this is a, an academic example that's evidence of that. Um, what happens if you start monkeying about with changing the defaults, either for the synchronicity of the initialization or the dynamics? Well, that's when interesting things happen. If you change your synchronous initialization to false, because say you have a long running init and you, it needs more than a few seconds to run, so setting a synchronous initialization to false is the correct thing to do. Um, however, that means any synchronous dynamics in the body of your manipulate, in the body of your dynamic module, um, will need to be aware of when does this initialization start? Is it still running? Is it complete yet? because you might not be able to display those dynamics until the initialization is complete. Um, so here we have an example of the wrong way to do something. We have a dynamic module that refers to the value of, of, the, of the local variable x, but x doesn't have a value until later on in an asynchronous initialization. And what we will see here when I evaluate this is the fully localized name of the variable x, which is not a very friendly display to show to your users. After a few seconds, yes, your initialization completes, and then it shows you the correct thing. But, uh, but that isn't a very user-friendly thing to do, to, to expose this inner gunk to users. So if you need to run a local, a long-running initialization, and if you want to show users something, 
I would encourage you to keep track of when that initialization is running and display one thing while it's running and then another thing while it's completed, after it's completed. So here we have another example that gets into a wait state with a little animated ellipsis. I'll show that again. Um, and then finally, when it's done, goes to the state where everything's warmed up. So this happens more often than you might think. Um, I thought I'd point it out as a common uh, difficulty that people have. Um, and we've made this especially complicated for users of dynamic module by taking care of the problem entirely from manipulate. So we've hidden this problem in manipulate by having our own custom weight cursor that we put up automatically whenever there's an asynchronous initialization. Uh, maybe you've seen it in the past, um, but that's why you haven't, if you're, if you're strictly a manipulate user and you're itching to get your fingers into dynamic module, this is one thing you'll need to be aware of. Okay. Again, bonus slides I won't be opening. This is for you. Um, and for the rest of the talk, I'm gonna sort of outline some common mistakes and pitfalls that people encounter when using dynamic module. Um, one that comes up fairly often is they think just because they put a symbol into the initialization option that it is therefore localized by the dynamic module. That is not the case. Like module, the only variables that are local are the ones that you list in the first argument to the dynamic module. You need to specify which variables are local. It doesn't automatically sort of figure out which variables you want to be local. So what does this mean? This means that you can drop an initialization uh, setting into a dynamic module that sets a global function, say, to, some, to something, and then you have another dynamic module, say, that sets that same global variable to something else. And notice that out 26 here is duck. When I evaluate this next guy, this now has changed to rabbit because this season and this season are the same. They are referring to the same global function. So how do you, how do you tell dynamic module that you want to localize the utility? Um, well, you can tell it by including the name of the utility in the first argument, because that's where you say where you want things localized. Um, and this is a perfectly reasonable way and, and good way to, to localize things. There's another way that, that uh, I will mention, because it's used in the demonstration site, and it's used by our help viewer. I will point out the presence of an option called cell context, which sets up a default context in which dynamic evaluations occur, or any evaluation occurs. So one could imagine, and I haven't imagined it, I've actually done it, um, taking the dynamic modules with the unlocalized season, so this is global in some sense, in this expression cell, but I've told this expression cell, use a unique context that's unique to this cell automatically. So even, so the context of season is not global when it, in this output. The context of season is cell dollar four seven five or something. Um, so in this way, one could imagine having you know different rectangles on screen corresponding to different ambient contexts and localizing things in that way rather than having them be local to the dynamic module. Well, question mark season is going to tell us the definition from above. Um, these guys are in a different context, so I think this is the interesting um, question here. So here are the here are the the automated contexts that the front end has created um, for for these instances of of that symbol. Yes. Um, is the question that can I set this to a string? Is that the, okay, so, so the question is, can I set cell context to a string rather than cell? And yes, in fact, the global default of cell context is, in fact, global. But it could be, you know, my context three or whatever you like. Note that, that when you give it a string, it needs to be a valid context name, so it ends in this backtick. 
if if you added that setting, that same setting to the other cell as well. Yes. This this option can also be set at the notebook level, so you can have a notebook, and this is what's done for demonstrations, for instance, um, and for our help viewers. So that's nice. Okay. Um, important thing to talk about is uh, is this red X, which we saw earlier in the uh, in the talk. Why is it that we say that this is a likely syntax error, or we're flagging it for special consideration by giving it this beautiful red color. Um, well, remember, module names are temporary. They exist only in the kernel. Um, and when we try to provide them as the basis for a dynamic, which wants a persistent reference to some variable to key off of, those two things are inconsistent with one another at their core. Um, and that's why the rule of thumb is that dynamics should never depend on local module variables. And I'll spell out exactly what that means with a very nice example that I found on, uh, on this website. I think this was actually from John Fultz. Gave a nice uh, sort of summary. So when is it okay to use module and dynamic together? Well, it's okay if the dynamic completely scopes your usage of module, so the module is completely contained within the dynamic. It's okay for module to create a dynamic as long as the dynamic it creates doesn't refer to any local module variables. Same for manipulate. You can create a manipulate, you can spit a manipulate out of a module as long as it doesn't refer to local module variables. Remember, these local module variables are the temporary ones that are going to be automatically deleted. Um, so, but these are cases where you have a dynamic or a manipulate, which implies dynamic that refers to a local module variable, and that's just no good. It's not going to work. It's going to fail for a number of reasons. Um, the question is, are there similar issues with width? Um, and width is, is a completely different animal. Um, I would not imagine there to be scoping conflicts in this way with width. We can, we can look at those together, perhaps. Um, but. Uh, Right, so, so how do you avoid using module and dynamic together? Don't use them together. Use dynamic module. Um, so, and the syntax coloring hopefully is there to, to help you remember that. Okay, um, let's see. Another common mistake that I see more often than I thought I'd see is a, a fundamental misunderstanding of lexical scoping. So this comes up most often in manipulate where somebody has a function that refers to a couple of variables that are kind of ambient, they're not passed into the function. And then they say manipulate of my function and they want to manipulate those variables. And they say, well, why is my plot empty? And these are not stupid people, these are smart people, um, but they haven't, uh, I guess we've, we have a failure of education here. Here's the same problem with dynamic module directly, an empty plot, why is this? Well. The variables outside in your definition of f are in a different scope than the ones in dynamic module. This, by the way, happens for module as well. So if people had been thinking clearly about dynamic module as a scoping construct, as a lexical scoping construct, perhaps they would have gotten to the point where they think, oh, lexical, these things need to be in the scope of the module in order for them to work. So how do you fix that? Well, um, the simplest thing is just to pass the variables uh, in this case by value to the utility. So rather than just having f of x and having a and b kind of be magically passed, um, you pass them through directly. Uh, okay, I think we have time for one more common problem. Um, in the case of building windowed interfaces, especially for interfaces that I've built for our internal use, um, I find more and more the need to handle cases where the kernel quits uh, in an interesting way. So we have an interface that, where the user has built up some state. We don't want to redo re that state automatically after the kernel quits because maybe they have changed their kernel, maybe they've switched to something else. Um, but we want to let them know that the kernel has quit and maybe offer to do some reinitialization for them. So here we have an example where I'm using a dollar session ID to track the session of the kernel. And being aware of when the session is the same or different as it was. So here, everything's fine until I quit the kernel. Watch what happens to this okay. I quit the kernel, and now things are not okay. 
and you can ask the user, do you want to do you want to do something about that? And they can choose to close the window, or they can choose to to run their initialization again and refresh. So it's exactly zero seconds left. The remainder of the slides are bonus slides. Um, and so we might have time for one or two questions. 